Hello there, Mr. Sutton here bringing you the AB Calculus 310 Classwork Extra Practice Solutions on Derivatives of Exponential Functions. On this problem, we want the derivative of e to the 2 over x. To make this a little bit easier to work with, I'm going to rewrite this as e to the 2x to the negative 1. And now I can use the chain rule and a little power rule inside the exponent. So I have the derivative of the outer function, e to the something. Uh, that derivative is also going to be e to the something, e to the 2x uh, to the negative 1. But now I have to multiply by the derivative of 2x to the negative 1. That's negative 2x to the negative 2. And now I have to rewrite this so that it actually looks like one of the answer choices. So this whole thing is going to be the negative. It's going to be a fraction because we have this uh, reciprocal here, this x to the negative 2. In the numerator, I have e to the, I guess I could rewrite this as 2 over x now. I also got this 2 from here. And in the denominator, I have the x squared that's moving downstairs. So matching an answer choice, this looks like it's going to be choice D. On this problem, we have derivative of 2 to the x. So this is one of those rare problems where they give us something that's not e as a base. So that we have to use the more general rule. Derivative of b to the x is going to be b to the x times the ln of b. So with this one, we've got 2 to the x times the ln of 2. And that's going to match answer choice C. For this problem, we need the slope of the tangent line for this graph at x equals 1. So essentially, we need the derivative here, which is going to require the quotient rule. Then we're going to have to plug in negative 1. So my quotient rule, we've got u prime v minus uv prime over v squared. Using the box and ribbon here, I have my numerator of e to the negative x, denominator of x plus 1. And now the derivatives of these, this derivative here, this is going to be negative e to the negative x. And we've got the derivative of x plus 1, which is going to be just 1. Now before I multiply things out with the ribbon, let me just plug in 1 inside the box. So plug in 1. I've got, let's see here, this is going to be e to the negative 1. So I can write that as 1 over e. And I'm going to go ahead and write that like that right away because I'm looking at the answer choices and I'm seeing a bunch of things back in fraction form. Over here, x plus 1, that's going to become 2 if I do 1 plus 1. Down here, this is going to be negative 1 over e. And this is just going to be 1. Multiplying things out with the ribbon now, I've got a negative 1 over e times 2. So I can simplify that to negative 2 over e. But I guess I'll do that in a minute. And then we have minus 1 over e times 1 all over 2 squared. Simplifying things a little bit. In the numerator, we've got negative 2 over e minus 1 over e. That's going to be a total of negative 3 over e. And down in the denominator, we've got 4. So same change flip here. We have negative 3 over e times 1 fourth. That's going to be negative 3 over 4e, which is going to be matching answer choice B. For this problem, we're trying to take the derivative of x squared times e to the x minus 1. So this is going to require, at some point, a product rule. You could distribute the x squared and then do a product rule on x squared times e to the x. Or you can just do the product rule right now. I'm just going to do it right now, get it over with. So we have u prime v plus uv prime for the product rule. So we have the box and ribbon then that I'm going to use to organize all this. I've got factors of x squared and e to the x minus 1. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of e to the x minus 1, that's just e to the x. That 1 gets differentiated away. Multiplying this out with the ribbon now, we've got 2x parentheses e to the x minus 1. And then we have x squared times e to the x that we're adding in there. So this almost matches an answer choice. I'm going to go ahead and distribute out this 2x. That gives me 2x e to the x minus 2x plus x squared e to the x. And does that match any of the answer choices? So I need something with three terms. I can't combine any of these because there's no like terms here. The only uh, answer choice with three terms is choice C. We've got the x squared e to the x, check. We have the minus 2x. We have the 2x e to the x, positive. So yeah, choice C. 
to take the derivative of sine of e to the negative x, I'm going to need a bit of a chain rule. So my outer function, I've got sine of something. So the derivative of that is cosine of something, cosine of e to the negative x. Now I'm going to multiply by a derivative of e to the negative x. So that's e to the something. This negative x is an inner function here. So that derivative, the outer derivative in there is going to be e to the negative x. But now we have to multiply by the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. So when the dust settles, we've got a negative e to the negative x times cosine of e to the negative x. So that's going to end up being answer choice e. For this problem, we have the f function here, which is 2e to the 4x squared. We want to know what x value gives us a tangent line slope of 3. So basically, we need to figure out the derivative of this thing, set it equal to 3, and then use our graphing calculator, looking at these answer choices, we're going to need it, uh, to see where those things intersect. So let me start with my derivative, my f prime. So derivative of 2e to all this stuff, this is going to be a 2e to the something kind of situation, a chain rule. Outer derivative is going to be 2e to the something, to the 4x squared. But now we have to multiply by the derivative of 4x squared, which is 8x. And all of this needs to take on a value of 3. So on our graph for now, we're going to graph each side of the equation as, as a separate function and then see where they intersect. So here I am in my y equals. My left side of the equation, I just entered right as it is there in my y1. For my y2, I've got 3. I'm going to see where these intersect. Now, half the battle here is figuring out a good window. Looking at the answer choices, all my answers are clustered between 0 and 0 0.6. So I'm going to use that for my window. If I, It turns out if I do much bigger of a window, I'm not going to be able to see things very well because this exponential function grows very fast. So going to window, I'm going 0 to 0 0.6. And then I'm going to do zoom 0, zoom fit. And hopefully that gives me a good window on where things are crossing here. So there's my left half of the equation. There's my horizontal line. And let me do second trace, option 5, intersect to see where these things cross in here. Let me just press enter one, two, three times. That gives me 0.168. So there's the graph. 0.168 was where they crossed. That was choice A. On this problem, I am trying to figure out the derivative of this equation with this x and y value. So I'm going to need to use implicit differentiation here for sure. There's no way to isolate y otherwise. And then plug in 1 half and 2 for x and y. So going from left to right, I need the derivative of e to the xy, which is the hardest piece of this whole thing. So we get it over with first. So this is going to be a chain rule with a product rule inside of it. I'm going to have e to the something as the derivative of the outer rule here. So e to the xy times, now I need my product rule. So let me get out the box and ribbon to do x times y. So I have x, I've got y, I've got their derivatives, which are 1. And because I'm impl implicitly differentiating, this is going to be dy over dx. y is treated as an inner function here. Multiplying this out, I've got a parentheses now with y plus x times dy over dx. And now we move on to the next term. Derivative of negative y squared, that's going to be negative 2y times dy over dx, equals e and 4 are both constants, so that's just going to be 0 on the other side. In order to get dy over dx by itself, I need to distribute this e to the xy term and get rid of this parentheses. So I've got e to the xy times y, or y e to the xy, either way. And then I also have uh, x, e to the xy, dy over dx. And then I have this negative 2y, dy over dx, and equals 0. That hasn't changed. All right, let me get the stuff with dy over dx to stay on the left and move uh, anything that's not dy over dx over to the right. So on the left side, I have x, e to the xy, dy over dx. I have this negative 2y, dy over dx, so that can stay. This y, e to the xy, that's got to move. It doesn't have a dy over dx in it. So let me subtract that over to the right side. And there's nothing else. So let's go back to the left side now and factor out a dy over dx. That's going to leave us with x, e to the xy minus 2y inside our parentheses. And we can now go ahead and divide by that stuff in parentheses to get dy over dx by itself. 
So this is our general derivative, but now we need to actually plug in the x value 1 half and the y value 2 to all of that. So this is going to end up being, let's see, this is negative y value of 2 times e to the 1 half times 2. Down here, we have an x value of 1 half times e to the 1 half times 2. So that term just kind of gets repeated there. Minus 2 times our y value of 2. In the numerator, this is going to be negative 2 times e, because the 1 half and the 2 cancel. Downstairs, we've got 1 half e minus 4. So e over 2 minus 4. This doesn't quite match any of the answer choices, so I need to do a little bit of algebra. Uh, so let's see here. This e over 2 and this minus 4, I can combine those terms. This is really e halves minus 8 halves, which is e minus 8 over 2 down there. And then I can do a little same change flip. This is going to be negative 2e times this 4, which is flipping up here. So we have negative 4e over e minus 8. And that still doesn't quite match any of the answer choices. But if I reverse all the signs in this fraction, which I'm allowed to do because that would just be multiplying by negative 1 over itself, then I end up with positive 4e over 8 minus e. And that finally matches one of our answer choices. Uh, that's going to be answer choice C. On this problem, I am trying to find the limit as h approaches 0 of all this stuff. This is actually the limit form of a derivative. So on problems like this, we have to identify the original function, take its derivative, and then possibly plug something in. So what's the original function here? Well, that's whatever something plus h is, is being plugged into. Now here I see I have a negative 1 minus h, and this minus h is kind of the tip off here. This tells me I, I could rewrite this exponent as negative parentheses 1 plus h. And that would mean that I'm basically doing e to the negative x. And I'm plugging in a value of positive 1 to that. So this is in contrast to uh, plug, having e to the x and plugging in negative 1. That wouldn't quite give us the same thing. That would give us negative 1 plus h if e to the positive x was our original function. So this e to the negative x with positive 1 plugged in would give us this. All right, so what's the derivative of this? Well, this is going to be e to the negative x times a tail of negative 1. And I'm plugging positive 1 into that. So I've got, this is going to be a positive 1 to the, or e to the, the negative 1. Because I'm plugging positive 1 into this negative x here. And that looks like negative 1 over e if I simplify it. So that's going to end up being answer choice B.